Princess uh, Ninma, and two princes, Prince Enlil, who is the uh, commander of, of all the operations on Earth, and Enki, who is the head of mining operations in Africa and the shipment of, of the gold, and he was the chief scientist. And uh, we saw how, uh, first of all, uh, Ninma uh, spurned Enlil. She didn't want to uh, be his lover, even though they'd already had a child together before. And she went to, over to uh, hang with uh, Enki, who she'd been engaged to. And they had a bunch of girls, and Enki was depressed. He wanted a son so bad. And, and so she finally just said, hey, that's enough. We're not going to do sex anymore. Let's just uh, have a, a friendship and and uh, do stuff together. Well, by 400,000 years ago, Enlil had built four centers in Mesopotamia and Sumer. Sippar was the name of his spaceport. Nippur was his mission control. The medical center was called Sharupak, and that's where... Um, Ninma had her uh, ruled, and Badira, Badibira, Badibira is the uh, metallurgy center, and uh, Ninma's son uh, Ninurta took uh, care of that. So Chief Scientist Enki's boats brought the gold from Southeast Africa to Badibira, and there they were pressed, processed into bars, and then at Nippur. And they'll build something called the Duran Key, which means bond between heaven and earth. And it was a dim communication chamber. It had telescopes that connected to a tall broadcasting tower where Enlil could talk with similar towers in each one of these centers the Nibirans had established. And he could also talk to the Nibirans on rockets, and they could talk to earth. And the first thing that we're going to really see today is uh, the astronauts that ran Mars base and the uh, uh, geosync uh, center, you know, a space uh, st center that hovered above, uh, had a rebellion. They were led uh, by the commander of Mars base. His name was Anzu, and he had been uh, an ally of Alalu, who had uh, been kicked out of the kingship of Nibiru. And Anzu uh, had 300 uh, Nibirans, and uh, they worked the uh, shuttle service, and they worked the orbiting station. His men were called the EGG, incidentally. And they rocketed to Sipper. They loaded gold from the sea freighters that came up from Africa. And Anzu's men on Mars rocketed the gold to Nibiru, and there the scientists powdered it and spread it into the air. And Enki says, slowly, the breach in heavens was healing. It was, in other words, the gold was working, this floating gold. From Mars, Anzu and the EGG demanded that Enlil better their work conditions. He wanted them to issue more elixir, stuff they got high on, and build a recreation center on Earth. King Anu from Nibiru told Anzu to, to go to Earth and talk to Enlil about it, and uh, Anu, King Anu told Enlil, show Anzu any, everything, but Enlil did not want to do that. He just did not trust uh, Anzu, but uh, he said, look, I, I run everything here, and you and uh, the astronauts, you have to obey me. You can't challenge me. Uh, but Enki, uh, the scientist, said, look, just sh show him how it's done. Uh, get Anzu to keep his men on the job. So Enlil told Anzu he could enter the restricted area in sterile clothes. When Enlil stripped down the uh, – and took off the key to the control room. Anzu stole the key, slipped into the control room, grabbed the crystals that ran all of Sumer's spaceports and cities. He forced the pilot, Enki's pilot, Abgal, to take uh, him to the spaceport. And this is uh, this is Anzu, and uh, there his men declared him king of Earth and Mars. So Anzu is trying to overthrow uh, Enlil. He turned off all the vital services at headquarters, cut the communications, and buzzed the end of light positions with his airplane. Well, the champion 
the son of uh, Ninurta launched his jet, and Jenna is going to read you what happens next. Okay, I'm reading from the fifth tablet of the Lost Book of Enki by Zechariah Sitchin. On earth the, the Anunnaki toiled. Of work and substance they were complaining. By earth's quick cycles they were disturbed. Of the elixir they only small rations were given. In the Eden the Anunnaki toiled. In the Absu the work was more backbreaking. That's Africa. By teams were Anunnaki sent back to Nibiru. By teams, new ones were arriving. The Ijiji on Lamu dwelling were the loudest. That Mars. Lamu is Mars. The Ijiji on Lamu dwelling were the loudest in complaining. When from Lamu to Earth they descended, a rest place on Earth they were demanding. With Anu did Anlil and Enki words exchange, the king they consulted. Let the leader come to earth with Ansu had decisions, so did Anu say to them. Ansu to earth from the heavens descended, the words of complaints to Enlil and Enki he delivered. Enlil, Ansu to Nibiruki, invited to the Howard Howard dark chamber he let them enter. He let him enter. In the innermost sanctuary, the tablets of destinies to Ansu he explained. What the Anunnaki in the five cities were doing to Anzu was shown. To the Ijiji, who at the landing place were arriving, relief he promised. To discuss the complaints of the Ijiji, he, to Nibiru Ki, then returned. A prince among the princes was Anzu of royal seed, his ancestry he counted. To take away the tablets of destinies, that means the computer program, he was scheming. Of the decrees of heaven and earth to take control in his heart, he was planning. The removal of the Enlil ship in his heart, he conceived. That means the, 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 the rule of earth by Enlil. To rule a Gigi and Anunnaki was his aim. Unsuspecting Enlil at the entrance to the sanctuary, Anzu let be stationed. With evil purpose, onto the tablets of destinies seized. In a sky chamber, he flew away to the mountains of the sky chambers. He swiftly went. Sky chambers are airplanes. Or they're probably spaceships up in the... Oh, airplanes. Yeah, to the mountains of the sky chamber. Okay. It's some kind of um, airplane spaceship type of thing. There in the landing place, rebellious Ijiji, for him were, wa were waiting. To declare Anzu king of earth and Lamu they were preparing. In the sanctuary of Nibiru Ki, the brilliance petered out, the humming quieted down. The brilliance means the uh, generator. Right, they were landing. Silence in the place prevailed. Suspended were the sacred formulas. In Nibiru Ki, Enlil was speechless. By treachery, he was overwhelmed. Okay. Read that. To Enki, angry words he spoke of the ancestry of Anzu he questioned. In the Biru Ki, the leaders gathered. The Anunnaki who decreed fates with Anu were consulting. Ninurta, by his mother, encouraged from the assembled, stepped forward. Enlil's warrior, I shall be, Anzu, I shall vanquish, thus was Ninurta, Ninurta saying. Lightning darts Ninurta at Anzu directed. The arrows could not approach Anzu. Backward, they turned. So, uh, obviously, lightning uh, darts are missiles. Right. And so, somehow, Anzu was uh, redirecting the uh, missiles back. Okay. Yankee yeah. then to Ninurta gave, counsel gave, with your whirlwind, stir up a storm. Another weapon. Let the dust cover Anzu's face. Let it, the wings of his sky bird ruffle. For his son Enlil, a mighty weapon fashioned. A Tilu missile it was. To your stormer weapon, attach it. When wing to wing near at Anzu, shoot it. The dust Anzu's face covered. The pinions of his sky bird were exposed. Into their midst, midst 
inerta, the missile let loose, a, fi a fiery brilliance, Anzu's pinions engulfed. Like butterflies, his wing began to flutter. To the ground, Anzu came falling. The earth shook, the skies became darkened. The fallen Anzu, Ninurta made captive. From him, the tablets he retrieved. From the mountaintop, the Ajiji were watching. Went to the landing place, Ninurta came. They trembled and kissed his feet. Ninurta, the captive Abgo, and Anunnaki set free to Anu and Enlil. His victory, victory he announced. Is that it? No, no. Uh, you read. Uh, well, okay. So, so Let's here, explain here, a little okay. bit of what was okay. going on there. So, so what's, ha what's happened here is um, Anzu has gotten uh, the main computer and the main uh, power source, and he's taken it over. His men are ready. They've gotten the whole thing together. They captured Abgal. They, uh, they've captured some other people. And uh, no one knows what to do. Well, Enlil and Ninurta uh, and uh, uh, Nimma's son, Ninurta, says, I'm, I'm not afraid. All these other guys are cowering, but I'm, I'm get, just give me a plane and give me some missiles. I'm going to get up there and shoot this guy down. And he does. He does that, and they, everyone's giving him advice on how to do it, and, and he does it. He, he gets Anzu down. He frees the captives. And he brings Anzu before the seven who judge, and they say, kill, kill a bastard. And uh, so uh, Ninurta kills him, and uh, it is a big public execution. And if you look at our site, www.enkispeaks.com, you'll see that we have uh, all the illustrations from the old days uh, about just, just what, what this involves. So can I read this part, please? Okay. So to Nubir Key, he then returned in its innermost chamber. The tablets were reinstalled. Once again, the brilliance there in return, the hum of Emmys in the tablets was restored. Before the seven who judge, Anzu, for a judgment was taken. To death by execution, the seven judged Anzu. With a killing ray, Anzu's life breath was extinguished. Let his body to the vultures be left, Dinurta said. Let him on Lamu be buried in a cave next to Alalu, be laid to rest, Enki was saying. From the same ancestral sea the two of them were. Let Marduk the body to Lamu carry. Let Marduk there as commander stay. So was Enki to the judges suggesting. Let it so be, Enlil said. Okay, so what's happened here is that uh, they take the body of Anzu and... And this is a big thing. Anlo has selected Enki's son, Marduk. He's starting out to cooperate. He selected the son of his rival to go take Anzu's place as head of the astronaut corps. And he wants to display Anzu's body so that all the astronauts uh, see, if you, if you don't obey me, Anlo's saying, you're going to be dead like this. And so that's, that's the, the end of that uh, rebellion. Now, what's behind the rebellion is that Enlil had a son uh, with Sud, the woman he was forced to marry. Her, her name was now Ninlil. And the son's name was Nanar. And he, he'll later become Allah. But Nanar was the one that was secretly funding um, Anzu. And so now Enlil sort of understands what's happening and he although he doesn't want to you know directly punish his own son nanar he doesn't trust him anymore even though nanar is a legitimate son and he puts all his energy into his son that he had when he was a young man with uh ninma namely ninurta he makes ninurta his champion and gives him the most incredible weapons a a uh missile with nine heads that can just shoot down anything and said now this is this guy is uh, Ninurta, my son, is my champion, and he is now uh, the person that's going to take over from me, not Nanar. And he just sort of ignores Nanar from this uh, from this point. Okay, so now things are going pretty good for the uh, uh, these people on Earth. They're, they are working hard. They're sending the gold up from Africa to Mesopotamia in ships, and there the uh, rockets take them. Uh, to uh, Mars and it's refined 
It's the ingots are refined into uh, and taken on to uh, Nibiru and Nibiru. They're further refined into finally you get the white powder of monoatomic gold, and it's really working. They're starting to heal uh, the breach in their uh, atmosphere, their, in their the hole in their ozone layer, and things are working out. And both the descendants of Enlil and the descendants of Enki start having kids, and their kids have kids, and they really start building up uh, a, uh, a civilization. Now, the, uh, there's about 600 of these uh, Nibirans who are down in the southeast Africa digging in the dirt, getting uh, gold out, and they are getting pissed. I mean, really upset. We're eating dirt. We're uh, we're in the dirt. We're trained scientists. Why are we doing this? This is this is. And so Enki is um, sort of ignoring this because he's really down in Africa. He's a he's a scientist, and he's playing with all these different species, trapping them and studying them. And one species that totally fascinates him is Homo erectus, which is. Uh, a human being, a full-on human being who's a survivor of earlier extinction events from earlier human settlements on Earth. And uh, this Homo erectus totally gets the attention of Enki because Homo erectus, you know, just you know, short human beings, uh, is letting other animals out of his traps, and he just doesn't understand it. The, uh, the uh, Nibirans are not uh, empathetic. And here is this creature, Homo erectus, that actually has feelings for other beings, that cares about them, is compassionate, just blows Enki's mind. He's so interested in, in these. And besides that, they're kind of good looking, especially the girls. And Enki, we'll see, does something with that. So what happens is he, Enki says, I will put these things together, and he sort of eggs the miners on and helps them uh, – a, a rebel, and they stop. So they first thing the miners do these these Nibirans they is they just do a slowdown, and they're sending less and less and less gold. So uh, Ninurta comes down to see what's going wrong, and uh, they uh, and uh, the miners are complaining to him, and so then uh, Ninurta says, "Well, send in Anugi the uh, uh, the overseer and and." Uh, and send Enlil too, because this is this is a job for the commander. We got to get these guys back to work. We need the gold on on Nibiru, and uh, the workers surround Enlil. And this is an open mutiny. And they've got all their tools, and they're threatening him. And uh, he's really in, in in bad shape. And then, ta da, to the rescue <laughs> comes Enki. He says, "Hey, now wait. You don't have to have all this uh, this problem." I've got a solution. We'll make some uh, mine workers. You'll make some mine workers? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take these Homo erectus, put our genes with theirs. I know, I, I'm, I've been working on how to engineer uh, genes together, kind of like our modern people are now able to do. But this is way back, you know, 300,000 years ago. We'll put our genes on their genes, and we'll make a primitive worker who will be glad, and we'll keep it, make him smart enough to obey our commands, but not so smart that he'll overthrow us. As a matter of fact, we'll keep him living a short time so that uh, they won't really put it together that, that, that uh, they're being uh, ruled. And they'll be happy to do what we, we say. And, and uh, I'll work with Nima. <laughs> I like working with Nima. And uh, my son, Nigashita, who I had with Erishkagal. And uh, let's, let's see what we can do. Well, the nerd says, hey, you know, it's against the rules of interplanetary settlement to, to have any kind of uh, slave race. Slavery has been uh, abolished on Nibiru for years and years. We can't have slaves. Well, Anki, An An you're such a smart guy. Why don't you invent some machines to do it instead? And Anki said, no, 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 that's going to take too long. Listen, if you have to, go ask uh, in a, um, Radio Anu on uh, – Nibiru and, and see, I, we absolutely need to go ahead with this experiment to see if we can make some uh, primitive workers. And uh, so Enki and Nimma and Ningashita uh, start experimenting. And Janet's going to read you all kinds of experiments that they made. But they they made all kinds of combinations like centaurs, mer, mer people, uh, cyclopses. They were doing all kinds of experiments, just uh, fixing engineering genes uh, of different creatures together, and they were trying to uh, create something that would be a um, 
a viable mind slave. So all these creatures that you see in mythology aren't just people's figments of imagination. These are actual genetic experiments. Okay, so we're going to go back to uh, Janet, and she's going to read uh, where Enki is trying to say what the solution is to the problem of the uh, mutiny in the mind. A solution is possible, Enki was saying. Let us create a Lulu, a primitive worker, the hardship work to take over. Let the being the toil of the Anunnaki carry on his back. Astounded were the besieged leaders. Speechless indeed they were. Who ever heard of a being of fresh created, a worker who the Anunnaki's work can do? They summoned Nima, one of the healing and succor was much knowing. Enki's words to her they repeated. Whoever of such a thing heard, they asked, they her asked. The task is unheard of, she to Enki said. All beings from a seed have descended. One being from another over eons did develop. None from nothing ever came. How right you are, my sister, Enki said, smiling. The, a secret of the Absu let me to you all reveal. The being that we need, it already exists. All that we have to do is put on it the mark of our essence. Thereby a Lulu, a primitive worker, shall be created, so did Enki to them say. Okay, so the first, the first thing they tried is Enki and Nigashida uh, had sex with erectus women. Um, they didn't impregnate them, but they had a lot of fun trying. So they... So Enki and Ningashita then gather their own seed and in test tubes fertilized erectus ova to create zygotes. And they planted the zygotes in erectus women. And so the, the first babies were born of the erectus women, but they lacked vision. They couldn't see or they couldn't use their hands right or the internals didn't function right. So to beat these defects, Nima created the next zygote in a vessel of copper and African clay. She somehow got it that the copper and the African clay, together with the uh, zyg with the uh, Anunnaki uh, um, seeds, sperm, and the erectus ova, might might work to make the primitive workers. And sure enough, they made a child. But the problem with this one is that it couldn't talk. Okay, so Janet is now going to go uh, reading on again from the, uh, right where it's. Uh, Page 132. See where this thing here is? Thank you, dear. There okay. it is. Is it from the beginning ordained or by us for choosing? To put the matter before Anu, they decided. Anu, before the council, the matter pre presented. The elders, the savants, the commanders were consulted. Long and bitter the discussions were of life and death, fate and destiny words were spoken. Can there be another way to... The goal to obtain, survival is in danger. If gold must be obtained, let the being be fashioned, the council decided. Let Anu forsake the roles of planetary journeys. Let the Biru be saved. From Anu's palace, the decision to earth was beamed. It Enki delighted. Let Nima, my helper, be of such matters, understanding she has. Thus was Enki saying, at Nima with a longing he was gazing. <laughs> Let it so be, Nimmo was saying. Let it so be, Enlo did say. By Anuji was the decision to the Anunnaki and the Absu announced. Until the being is achieved to the toil, willingly you must return, he said. There was disappointment, rebellion there was not. To the toil, the Anunnaki returned. In the house of life, in the Absu, how to fashion a being, Enki, to Nimmo was explaining. To place him on the trees, Nima, he directed, a place of cages it was. In the cages there were odd creatures, their likes in the wild no one had seen. Four parts of one kind they had, hind parts of another creature they possessed. Creatures of two kinds by their essences combined to Nima, Enki was showing. To the house of life they returned, to a clean place with brightness shining they led her. In the clean place, Nigashida to Nima, the life essence secrets, was explaining how the essence from two kinds combined can be. He to her was showing. The creatures in the tree cages were too odd. Monstrous they are, Nima was saying. 
Indeed so, Aki responded, to attain perfection for that you are needed. How the essence to combine, how much of this, how much of that to put together? In which womb conception to begin? In which womb should the birth be given? For that your succor and healing understanding are needed. The understanding of one who gave birth, who a mother is required. A smile on the face of Nimmo was, the two daughters that by Anki she mothered, she well remembered. By a male inseminating a female are the essences, essences transmitted. The two entwined strands separate and combine an offspring to fashion. Let a male Anunnaki, a two-legged female, impregnate. Let a combination offspring be born, thus did Nimmo say. That we have tried with failures, it resulted to her, Enki responded. There was no conceiving, there was no birth. Now this is the account of how the primitive worker was created. How Enki and Nimma with Ningashida assisting the being fashioned. Another way the admixture of essences to attain must be tried, Nimma was saying. How the two strands of essences to combine another way must be found. That which from the earth is the portion must not be harmed. To receive our essence in graduations, it must be shaped. From the Emmy formulas of the Beerus essence, only bit by bit could be attempted. In a crystal vessel, Nima and that mixture was preparing. The oval of a female two-legged she gently placed. With Emmy Anunnaki seed containing, she the oval impregnated. That oval back into the womb of the two-legged female she inserted. The allotted time arrived. There was no birth giving. In desperation, Nima, a cutting maid, that which was conceived with tongs, she drew out. A living being it was. With glee, Enki shouted, we attained, Nigashida with joy cried out. In her hands, Nimma, the newborn, held with joy she was not filled. Shaggy with hair all over was the newborn, his foreparts like that of earth creatures were. His hind parts to those of the Adonaki, more kin they were. They let the two-legged female, the newborn, newborn nurse, with her milk him to suckle. Fast was the newborn growing. What on Nibiru a day was, a month in the Absu was. Taller the earth child grew, in the image of the Anunnaki he was not. His hands for tolls were not suited, his speech only grunting sounds was. We must try once more, Nemo was saying, the admixture needs adjusting. This one more in the likeness of what the Anunnaki was. Appealing he was by his looks, his hands to hold tools were shapen. His senses they tested, they found them deficient. The uh, their child could not hear. His eyesight sight was faltered. Again and again, Nima rearranged the admixtures of the ME formulas. She took bits and pieces. Once more an admixture she made. Once more the new board was deficient. Perchance the shortfall is not in the admixture, Enki to her was saying. Perchance neither in the female's oval nor in the essences is the hindrance. Of what the earth itself is fashioned, perhaps, perhaps that is what is missing. Not of Nibiru's crystals use the vessel, of the clay of earth make it. So was Enki with great wisdom possessed to Nimmo saying, Perchance what is earth's own admixture of gold and copper is required. Thus was Enki, he who knows things prompting her to use clay of the Absu. In the house of life, Nimmo made a vessel of the Absu's clay, she made it. As a purifying bath, she shaped the vessel within it to make the admixture. Gently into the clay vessel, the oval of an earth female, the two-legged, she put. The life essence from an Anunnaki's blood extracted she in the vessel placed. By the ME formulas was the essence directed. Bit by correct bit was it in the vessel added. Then the oval thus fertilized into the womb of the earth female she inserted. With her hands, new, the newborn, with her hands, Nimma, the newborn, extracted. A male it was. Of speakings, he had no understanding. Grunts 
and snorts were his utterings. Anky the matter was pondering. What was done each step in that mixture he considered? Of all that we had tried and changed, one thing was never altered, to him what he was saying. Into the womb of the earth female the fertilized oval was always oval was always inserted. Perhaps perchance this is the remaining obstruction. Of the birth giving womb am I speaking to her, Aki was responding, of who the fertilized oval nurtures to birth giving carries. In our image and after our likeness to be, perchance an Anunnaki womb is required. Nima was saying. Nima said, I shall be the Anunnaki womb to provide for good or evil, fate to face. Longer than on earth, quicker than on Nibiru, travail came to a male child Nima birth was giving. Now this is the account of how Adamu by name was called, and how Tiamat, a counterpart counterpart female for him was fashioned. The newborn's visage and limbs the leaders carefully examined. Of good shape were his ears, his eyes were not clogged. His limbs were proper hind parts, like legs four parts, like hands were shaped. Shaggy like the wild ones, he was not. Dark black his head hair was. Smooth was his skin, smooth as the Anunnaki skin it was. Like dark red blood was its color, like the clay of the Absu was its hue. They looked at his malehood. Odd was its shape. By a skin, it was its forepart surrounded. Unlike that of Anunnaki malehood, it was a skin from his forepart was hanging. Let the earthling from us Anunnaki by this foreskin be distinguished, so it was Enki saying. The newborn to cry was beginning to her chest. Nimma closely drew him. Her breast to him she gave. The breast he began to suckle. Enki at his sister was gazing, a mother and son, not Nima, and a being he was seeing. A name will you give him, Enki inquired? A being he is not, not a creature. Nima cast her hand upon the newborn's born's body with her fingers, his dark red skin she caressed. Adamu, I shall call him, Nima was saying, one who like earth's clay is, that will be his name. A model indeed he shall be, as for himself, like a firstling, he shall be treated. From toil he himself shall be protected, his essence alone as a mold shall be. From her city, Sharulak, Nima, female, he was summoned. The task required to them, she explained. Of the female Anunnaki assembled, seven stepped forward, seven the task accept, accepted. In seven vessels of the clay of the Alps who made, Nima, ovals of the two-legged females, placed. The life essence of Adamu she extracted, bit by bit in the vessel she it inserted. Then in the male part of Adamu, an incision she made, a drop of blood to let out. Let this a sign of life be, that flesh and soul have combined it, let it forever co proclaim. She squeezed the male part for blood, one drop of blood in each vessel to the admixture she added. In this clay's admixture, earthling with the Anunnaki shall be bound. Thus was Nimmo saying, an incantation she was pronouncing. To a unity shall the two essences, one of earth, one of heaven, together be brought. That which is of earth and that which is from Nibiru by a blood kinship, kinship bonded. So was Nimmo pronouncing her words Nigashita also recorded. In the womb of the birth giving heroines, the fertilized ovaries were inserted. Let the procedure be repeated, seven more the toil to undertake. Indeed the task is too demanding, slow beyond enduring it is, Nimu to them said. Female ones we have to fashion, Eki was saying, for males counterparts parts to be. Let them know each other as one flesh the two to become. Let them by themselves procreate on their own the childbirthing make. To primitive workers by themselves give birth Anunnaki females to relieve. The Emmy formulas you must change from male to female adjustments make. So did Enki did Nengashita say. 
for a counterpart to a dhamma to be fashioned in the womb of an Anunnaki female conception is needed. So did Nigashiza to his father, Enki responding, say. Enki at Nima, his gaze directed. Before she could speak, he raised his hand. Let me this time, Ninki, my spouse, summon. With a strong voice, he said. If she is willing, let her the mold for the female earthling create. By the task, Ninki was fascinated. Let it be done, she to them said. By the Emmy formulas, Nigashida adjusting made by the admixture was an oval fertilized. Into the womb of his spouse, Enki it inserted. With much care, he did it. The tenth month, a month of evil fates, they began to call. Emma, the lady whose hand wombs has opened with a cutter and incision made. A female, a female birth was given to Ninki with joy, she shouted. Nimma, the girl child, held in her hands. She slapped her hind parts. Proper sounds, the newborn uttered. To Ninki, the spouse of Enki, she let the newborn handed to be suckled, nourished, and raised. Tiamat, let her name be, the mother of life, Ninki was saying. From her wounds, life essences, other birth givers shall be molded. To a multitude of primitive workers, she thereby life will be giving. Okay, so now we, we've got a male and a female, and what uh, the scientists are hoping they're going to do is they're going to make their own babies. However, as Janet reads on, Now this is the account of Adamu and Tiamat in the Eden and how they knowing of procreation were given and to the absolute expelled. So Eden is Basara. It's the Garden of Eden. Yeah. <laughs> and Abzu is Africa, just to remind you. Yes. Uh, uh, ovals are Oba, and right. uh, essences and seed, of course, are, are semen. After Tiamat in the womb of Ninki was fashioned, in the seven vessels of the clay of the Apsu made Nima ovals of the two-legged females placed. The life essence of Tiamat she extracted, bit by bit in the vessels she inserted. In the vessels of the clay of the Apsu made Nima, the admixture formed. In the wombs of the birth-giving heroines, the fertilized ovals were inserted. There was conception that the allotted time birth-givings were occurring, at the allotted time, seven, seven female earthlings were born. Their features were proper good sounds they were uttering. Thus were seven female counterparts for the primitive workers created. Seven male and seven female did the four leaders create them. After the earthlings were thus created, let the males, the females, inseminate. Let the primitive workers by themselves offspring beget. So was Enki to the other saying, after the allotted time, offsprings, other offsprings will beget. Plentiful will be the primitive workers' numbers. The toil of the Anunnaki they shall bear. Anki and Ninki, Nimma and Nigashida were joyful. The fruits, fruits elixir they were drinking. I we think that's wine. For the seven and seven cages they made among the trees, they placed them. Let them together grow up, malehoods and femalehoods attain. Let the males and females inseminate. Let them by themselves offspring beget. So they were saying to each other, As for them, Adamu and Tiamat, from the toil of the excavations, they shall be protected. Let us them to the Eden bring over to the Anunnaki therein in our handiwork display. So was Enki to the other saying, with that the others did concur. To Eridu in the Eden, the city of Enki, Adamu and Tiamat were taken. An abode in the enclosure for them was built, to roam wherein they could. The Anunnaki of the Eden came to see them, from the landing place they came. And okay to see them. By the sight, his displeasure was diminished. Then Erta came to see them. Nino did as well. From the way station on Lamu, Marduk, the son of Enki, also came down to see. The Ajiji who between Earth and Lamu shadow were also all agog. No conceiving among the females was observed. There was no birth giving. Indeed, he saw them made in Nigashida. The males and females were inseminating, conceiving there was not, birth giving there was not. In Shurubak, in the House of Healing, the essences of Adamu and Tiamat were contemplated. 
With the life essence of Anunnaki males and females, they were compared. Like two entwined serpents, Nigashita, the essences separated. Arranged like 22 branches on a tree of life were the essences. Their bits were comparable, the images and likenesses they properly determined. 22 they were in number, the ability to procreate that they, they did not include. These are the genes, These and this, genes. Is, this is how Nigashita discovered the X and XY genes that distinguish a male and female at the genetic level. This is one of the most important discoveries in, in all genetics. Another two bits of the essence in the Anunnaki present negotiated to the other showed. One male, one female. Without them, there was no procreating. So he, so was he to them explaining. In the molds of Adam and Tiamat, in combining, they were not included. Nima heard this and was distraught. With frustration was Enki sees. The clamor in the Alps was great. Nearly is again in the making, so was Enki to them saying. Primitive workers must be procured, lest the gold extracting shall be ceasing. Megashita, in these matters, learned a solution was proposing. To his elders, Anki and Nima, in the house of healing, he whispered, They, all the heroines who Nima were assisting, sent away. They locked the doors behind them, the three with the two earthlings alone remaining. Upon the four others, Megashita, a deep sleep caused to descend. The four he made unfeeling. From the rib of Anki, the life essence he extracted. Into the rib of Adamu, the life essence of Enki he inserted. From the rib of Nimma, the life essence he extracted. Into the rib of Tiamat, the life essence he inserted. When the incisions were made, the flesh thereon he closed up. Then the four of them by Nigashita were awakened. It is done, he proudly declared. To their tree of life, two branches have been added. With procreating powers, their life essences are now entwined. Let them roam freely, as one flesh, let them know each other, Nima was saying. Of their nakedness, they became aware. Of malehood and femalehood, they were knowing. Tiamat of leaves, aprons made, and the wild beasts to be distinguished. In heat of the day, Emil in the orchard was strolling, the shade he was enjoying. Without expectation, Adamu and Tiamat he encountered, the aprons on the loins he noticed. What is the meaning of this, Enlil wondered, Enki for explaining he summoned. The matter of procreation, Enki to Enlil explained. Great was Enlil's anger, furious his words were. The whole thing was not to my liking, for acting as creators I had opposed. The being that we needed already exists, so were you, Enki saying. All we need is to put our mark on it, thereby primitive workers to fashion. Healing heroines themselves put at risk, Nima and Ninsky were endangered. To no avail, it was all. Your handiwork was a failure. Now the last bits of our life essence into these creatures you have given to be like us in procreation knowing, perhaps, perhaps, yeah, perchance our life cycles in them to bestow. Thus did Enlil with angry words speak. Enki, Nima, and Nigashida summoned with words Enlil to pacify. My lord Enlil, Nigashid was saying, knowing for protection, for procreation, for knowing for procreation they were given. The branch of long living to their essence tree was not. Nimna then spoke up. To her brother Enlil, she was saying, what was the choice, my brother? To end it all in failure, failure, Nibiru, and doom to face its fate? Or to try, and try, and try, and by procreation let earthlings of toil undertake. Then let them be where they are needed, and though with anger said, To the Absu, away from Eden, let them be expelled. So this is the beginning. Ningashita has discovered uh, how to make these primitive workers, which are uh, largely uh, genetically Nibiran, and they're also Homo erectus, and they also have the clay of Africa and copper added, and, and they can now make babies. And so this really takes off. And this all this took place 300,000 years ago, and it was a success. Enki established this huge establishment down in uh, the southeast of Africa. He uh, lined um, these 500 meters of uh, lanes with uh, granite boulders that were very high in iron and he laid out a grid uh, in the shape of a capacitor on top of the ley lines of the earth and they really started uh, making 
mining lots and lots of gold and shipping them up the east coast of Africa. There were these huge settlements, and uh, Nergal 